So this is going to be a super complicated preglaze in here. Uh, I don't know, it's going to be really hard to keep track of what we're doing. It's basically a Prussian blue. <laughs> That's, it's going to be most of it. I mean, maybe a little bit of indigo in some places, but uh, for the most part, yeah, we'll just keep things simple here. Very, very simple. This is some random 3D printed base thing that I did. They just actually happened to fit on the Eldfall Chronicles base, so I thought, eh, why not? Uh, yeah, Pura Vita, and uh, to make it that much heavier, there was actually a few hundred pounds of stuff on it still. I took away probably about 600 pounds worth of stuff, but there was there was no no space for the rest of it, so there was at least 200 pounds worth of stuff left on that thing. And then it just got uh, just got moved over. Uh, oh, okay, here, let me get rid of this, because I thought I had already closed this down. There we go. That's better. I'm just going to look at my uh, water. Okay, so maybe uh, we'll get a little bit of greens in here, too, just because. So thanks so much, Bithron. Appreciate that. Oh, and by the way, I do also have uh, some of the, I almost said Egyptian violets, some of the, here, let's use some. That's ultramarine blue, because reasons. Now, I will be throwing some uh, thalo green into some of this, too, but for now, what the heck, we'll just chuck this on here. Like, it's a big deal, right? So thanks again, Bithron. Appreciate that. Now, I'm not going to use a whole chunk and bunch of thinner here since this is all cast resin here. So we're not going to be as absorbent necessarily as some of the other stuff that we've painted. And, well, let's put it this way. It took two weeks of moving stuff. No, actually, I started this process on about the 3rd of July. Just to get to that table took about a week and a half. To be able to move it took, well, about a month. Because so much other stuff had to be moved so that that could be moved. And to put that stuff, to find a place to move the stuff that needed to be moved was an adventure. And uh, I, this is actually still just kind of a down payment, but as a testament to just how much space, well, and Landrass knows this, the kind of footprint that printers take up, once those printers were gone off of the original table, I put 10 times the amount of stuff onto that table. Because the printers just, I mean, they took up the whole table, but it was, uh, let's put it this way, the printers uh, have a very wide, very huge footprint compared to just regular things. So yeah, when it came to putting regular stuff on that table, oh my gosh. There's all kinds of, I was able to get miniatures organized, boxes of miniatures organized on there, all kinds of stuff. And actually, Bithron, believe it or not, I was thinking about putting the Ender 3 over there, but since it's not actually being used at all, that's the, even that's not on there. Now, there is a... Some of the paraphernalia that goes with it, like the spools and some of the other pieces that is on one of the shelves in this new area. But yeah, even then, there's still no FDM printer there. That's, uh, if I ever want to use that, I think I'll use that in the garage. Because that's a little bit less uh, sensitive to the weather. Right, uh, Landrast? So I think that's where that one might go, is, is when we get that new garage going. So again, super complicated preglaze, just a couple of different types of blues here. Very, very complicated, right? And well, you can see this is already starting to get a little bit less shiny over there, which is really cool. All right, let's do the here. Like so. So Bithron, again, glad you got a chance to, to play... Uh, play that I haven't uh, I keep forgetting to try and find some gameplay videos or whatever of conquest uh, there's uh, no time to watch those right now but I am hoping that kind of changes I was also hoping to make space for a uh, for a computer down there that that can be somewhat near where the the printers are so that when I'm exercising and stuff I can still maybe uh, 
download files uh, for STL files and maybe even do Chidu box stuff or whatever down there too. Actually, it would be nice to be able to do the Cheeto box stuff down there where the printer is. It kind of depends what the space will allow and, and everything. Okay, so there we go. We have our super complicated preglaze there. Hmm. You know what? Here, let me just... Uh, I don't know. We'll clean off this brush while I'm waiting for that uh, preglaze to set on there just a little bit. Just going to let that sit there for a few days. Sometimes two, three minutes can make a big difference. All right, again, I'm just... Uh, paper towels, that's what you're going to need around there. And, of course, this is the uh, brush cleaner that we use. And, of course, look at that. It'll work for acrylics, too. So not just the oils, also not hazardous, no vapor. And here is... There's my giant vat of thinner. Yeah, that's a water bottle cap. That's all I'm going to be using tonight. And possibly tomorrow, too. So there's no giant vat of... People keep saying, that oh, there's this big, you know, giant things of chemicals all around and this and that. And like, I don't know what you're doing. But I've got that tiny little thing there. And I have also a tiny little container with that brush cleaner, which also, again, has no odors or vapors or anything like that. So... That's uh, yet another thing from Big Acrylic, right, uh, right, Landrast? Big Acrylic trying to take away our fun. Now, the Prussian Blue, the Indigo, those are going to be staining colors. That Ultramarine Blue, not so much. However, uh, when it, uh, it, the Williamsburg variety does have a... Well, if you're kind of gentle with it, at least you won't wipe all of it off. So that is not regular paint thinner. That is the super high quality Mona Lisa odorless thinner. You wouldn't want to use that cheap, nasty stuff anyways because it's it's going to be rough on the paints, rough on the brushes, and rough on you. So yeah, it, uh, it happens fast. Don't blink. Even on the, the pre-glaze, don't blink. Uh, let's see, uh, oh, so, uh, wow, they actually have a wild card spot, so I'm, uh, I'm guessing that New York is in the top spot, so that would mean they've actually, uh, they've passed probably the Red Sox and maybe even, uh, the Rays, don't say devil, yeah, I think they've probably even passed them. Yeah, that's, it'd be really unusual for a third place team to be, uh, holding a wild card spot there. All right, there we go. Just using some of the thinner, smaller sponges, which I used to just toss in the garbage. It's kind of hard to believe there was a time where I would be doing that. So, Rathy, hopefully you had yourself some fun today. I know that, uh, well, when we talked yesterday, uh, you weren't doing quite as much business this weekend as maybe other weekends. There's a little less business going on, so a little more relaxed maybe this weekend, a little more chill. See, this is the thing that can't, I can't do with the really big ones, and I just I still can't believe I just used to throw those other ones away. So there you go. Don't blink. Twelve minutes in, that's what we have. That's uh, Now, remember we were fooling around with the ones where there was no pre-glaze, like all those uh, Candace chariots we've been doing. To me, as far as I would say, I would much rather do the pre-glaze than do what we did. I mean, it was it was a fun experiment, and I actually I got to get the... Uh, Got to get all the flock and everything on these guys. I managed to remember this time to put the uh, big old magnet <coughs> on the bottom of this guy right here. Hey there, Dave. How you doing? So, uh, well, let's see. Where's our... Oh, here it is. Here we go. Speaking of Galadriel, this was our stream last night. So, yeah, that's from the printing goes ever on. That that's basically one that we can actually use on the, on the table because it's on a genuine 25 mil base. So there's a dark queen schmaladriel right there. Yeah, much tougher than any uh, short blonde elf, right, Dave? Because that that was my name for that character was just short blonde elf for the uh, rings of recycled fantasy. 
You know what? I might even, while I'm thinking about it here, let me just get rid of some of this. And but no, no, no. Let me do some of the uh, dry brushy stuff here first. Hey there, Drax. How you doing? Yeah, Dave, we did a bigger version, and I always wanted one that was a table size. Uh, there's also a bust version of this, so obviously the we could go a little bit fancier with the freehand on this one here. But that was, again, that was really fun from the printing goes ever on. Uh, Dave, uh, it's, it's <laughs> you know, I could... Uh, I'll tell you this, Dave. I guarantee that if they do make a, a set, they won't. They'll never send them to me, right, Drax? There's no way they're sending them here, because uh, I'm <laughs> I'm probably public enemy number one. Wouldn't you say, Drax, for GW? Now let's do something like uh, this. That's actually the uh, radiant green. Oh look, dry brushy time. Time for a little bit of dry brushy here. So everybody, please give Drax a follow if you could. And uh, well, Drax, if you want to post, you want to post anything in the chat there, of course, that'd be uh, fantastic. Go ahead and do that. I know you've just got so much stuff, and hopefully, uh, now did you make any offline progress on your Nova entries there, or is that something you're just saying, well, okay, I, I'll paint it on stream. That's all I got time for. I'm just going to throw a little, uh, yeah, what the heck. I'm just going to start putting some of this over here, too. We're going to just see what the heck happens. Uh going to be a lot of color changes through this thing, I believe. Because why not? All right, so that was our uh, little bit of green. And then how's about we shift over here to something that's got a little bit more of the uh, reddishness to it. It's ultramarine blue. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of the uh, radiant blue too. Ah, uh, so sorry that everything's so toasty there, Drax. I mean, is it something where it's just happened with greater and greater frequency, or is it just kind of well, that's what happens this time of year? Because I mean, that is summer gets hot. Much like a plasma gun, right? Right, Drax, you roll that one, your plasma gun or whatever gets hot. I'm guessing they still have that roll. And uh, actually, that, that's that been the same thing here, Drax. If anything, it's been either normal or mild as far as that goes. May I guess in Europe, uh, now, uh, so Arathu... Uh, I remember there was the one year, what was that, two, three years ago, where even up in uh, up in Norway and, and Finland and such, you guys were having uh, some toasty weather up there. I don't know, has it been doing that again, or has it been relatively normal there? Yeah, Dave, uh, again, considering that I am uh, I am a verb, right, to be tomb-kinged, <laughs> I, I think I've been very, very, very gentle with them. Now, it could certainly be uh, a little bit more tart, that's for sure. Now, I'm going to get me some of the maybe Mars, but a little bit of the uh, Van Dyke brown there. Because initially I was going to do this more as an ice sort of a thing. And then I thought, no, nah, how's about we just do it more like some water here. So I'm just going to chuck some of this darker stuff in here. We'll be coming back with our... We haven't actually done our uh, lighter stuff over the top on the rocks just yet. We'll do that in a sec here. Now, Drax, hopefully that has also uh, kind of cut down on the electric bills. I know here with all of the stuff that I did around the house with the those insulating drapes and the, and the new a, a air conditioner window unit that's more probably more efficient. I would say there's been a good at least a 25 to 30 percent reduction in cost there, which I'm not terrible. Here, I'm going to get me some of this. Uh, Radiant Violet, throw that on here. 
Yeah, keeping it fast, keeping it simple. Landrast, uh, much like a rhubarb pie, we got to keep things tart here, don't we? All right, now, now let's get a little bit more of that. Yeah, let's do some more of the radiant violet there too. And pop some more in here. So yeah, Drax, I spent at least another three hours or so today. I was at least able to get the printers moved to the new table and uh, get them hooked up to the UPC backup. So at least that progress has been made. Much more to do there, but uh, even worked on the lights around the area there so that they can be dimmed and still have the rest of the lights further away in the basement because uh, they're all in the same row of sconce lights there. Those other ones can be going at full power. These, I can either have them off or uh, dimmed significantly. Uh, let's see. Uh, so that was a few years ago then. Now, nah, Arathu, uh, okay, so I, I thought it was a couple of years ago-ish, something like that, when things got a little bit crazy there with all the heat. Now, do we go, eh... Okay, fine. We'll do the lighter color here. Uh, now, Blades, what were you working on? Because uh, I, I remember seeing the, the picture of what you were working on on stream there. Again, hopefully uh, it'll be very fun for you to get back to it uh, after uh, Monday there. So, yeah, anytime I see anything that's in the teens, like uh, 15... Celsius and below, I, I always figure, well, that's got to be at least 60 degrees down into the 50s when you get into the low teens there. I believe 72 degrees is, what, 19 degrees Celsius, 20 degrees Celsius, something like that. Maybe more like 20 degrees Celsius. So, yeah, okay, what the heck. We'll just go lighter with the hair. I was initially going to go darker, but then maybe we do some darker stuff on the clothes. Yeah, maybe we'll do darker stuff there. So, okay, maybe we just go a little... We'll just go lighter on the hair then. So, we're going to shove this down in here to get our light on there. Uh, so Drax, uh, well, it's, I guess uh, Tuesday, right, would be the next day you'd be streaming? Or would that be Wednesday? Uh, we, Tuesday, I think, would be your next stream. Because I, I just remember, uh, you, you, I think Sunday, you used to also stream Sunday, too. Ironically enough, my stream schedule has stayed, at least as far as the days go. That's been pretty much the same now for years. The times have had to shift around, that's for sure. No doubt about that. Okay, so we just uh, kind of change the hair around to make that lighter, just whatever. Uh, so we'll be streaming Oh, on, uh, on Sunday, okay. Well, hopefully you can get lots done on your... Uh, on your Nova Open stuff. Yeah, this is going to have more of the ultramarine blue-ishness to it. And then we'll get maybe some more green down on the uh, clothes here. All right. Thalo green, Prussian blue. It's going to be sort of a teal color there. Just looking to have some variety in this, just for fun. Hey there, painting badly. Great to see you back. Uh, painting badly. If you have any uh, any sort of charts or info or something like that stuff that you uh, discoveries that you made with the with the oils there, something like that. If if you got if you want to share those or something in in the chat. 
always always good to provide folks with data, right? Uh, painting badly. This is more of the Prussian blue here. That's uh, well, yeah. This that could be the, that. That's the the gift that keeps on giving, right, uh, Arasu? That's for sure. In more ways than one. Did I? Here we go. Yeah, I mean it's it's all about physical fitness, right, Arasu? Oh, okay, tail. I didn't see the tail before, so there's a tail there. All right, good to know. Didn't know that before. Now I'm just gonna go straight up with the ultramarine here again. Just looking to have uh, some different colors happening here, a little different shades. Some parts more of a teal, some parts more of a uh, more of a reddish blue. Now let me take your. Mm, let's see that again. That says your salo green. A little bit of the radiant green. Yeah, looking to always uh, kind of change the color around here where possible. We haven't done anything at all in the range of our lightest lights here. Kind of hanging on to those for the moment. Because, uh, what is it, 26 minutes in, That's uh, that's it so far. Uh, so painting badly, I generally just ignore that because the oils are so rugged. The only time, well, this one might need some because the thalo green does sometimes have a tendency to dry a little bit on the shinier side. And the only thing I'll ever use is just this. Since I only need it in a few little areas, I'll just very gently brush on a tiny bit of this anti-shine, and that is it. I don't we'll fool around with anything else, especially since, uh, well... Things can go horribly wrong with uh, humidity and other stuff like that. At least then I'm, I'm inside and I can know I'm in a totally climate controlled space and don't have to worry about any mischief or mayhem when it comes to the uh, when it comes to that. But yeah, varnishing really not something that I worry about with the oils since they are so incredibly durable. And the now, Grumdy and Green Fairy and a bunch of other folks that have painted tons of miniatures with the oil paints, and they're taking on the tournaments, so they're, they're, their miniatures are seeing a lot more of the outside world than mine do. And they say, yeah, they're just fine. No need to be screwing around with that stuff. Might still get yeah here. Uh, you know, let's let's get down to some of the lighter stuff first before we get too deep into this here. So that is something I keep super super simple. Nothing uh, nothing crazy. Nothing fancy at all. A little bit of army paint or anti shine where I think I need it, and that's it. I don't want the skin tone to get too light. Might even well. Let's see. We'll see what happens. See, that's why I was hoping to actually make the hair a darker blue. But well, we'll we'll stick with the lighter stuff here. See what that gets us. Uh, so again, painting badly. I didn't even uh, I didn't varnish my 2D paintings either. And, like I said, dec decades later, they're just fine. Now, if there was a lot of shiny stuff, or if they kind of dried very dull or something like that, there was a variation there, well, then I would use it. But all I can say is, I know I was saying this the other day with the Dr. Martin's dyes, having been uh, doing this for, well, a long time, longer than I'm sure most folks in the chat have been alive, 
the, just longevity wise it's just fine 200 years from now I don't care 100 years from now don't care actually 50 years from now don't care it's not gonna matter at least not to me anyways so I'm just uh, I'm just not gonna fret about it I know that might upset some folks but ah, not gonna worry about it no big deal to me so yeah she has a tail I didn't uh, didn't realize that and that that's kind of the oh that's actually uh, Oh, I see. So we can change that. So what I'm actually going to do then is take some of that off of there. Okay, that's good. That means I can do something else over here. Maybe something more like this uh, teal over here. So yeah, painting badly. Uh, if there is some kind of way or an area just as weird and shiny, I'll just hit it with the um, uh, anti-shine. Oh, that's the other nice thing, painting badly. I mean, let's say there's maybe an area where you know it's just going to come into a lot of contact, like a Blood Bowl figure. Well, what do you do? You just uh, actually could give it two, three uh, layers of, of anti-shine there. So that's the other nice thing about it is you can really control just how much of it you're using. So yeah, now that I see that is actually uh, not skin tone there I can alter that a little bit this I okay now with that being a little darker now with Ron I'm glad it's not so hot for you there anymore for a while it was uh, seemed to be kind of toasty for you okay so that makes a bit of a difference there hey there Rico's mom welcome back everybody please say hello to Rico's mom so Rico's mom I hope that uh, hope that you did get yourself a decent night's sleep there and happy Sunday to you of course let's see well, it's 827 here so yep new uh, lunchtime sounds good So, uh, uh, so painting badly, I mean, I just know which colors are going to be saturated. And I just said uh, that's just in my head as I'm making my cal calculations there. Like, well, the Prussian blue here, the, the thalo green that I'm putting in there. I know those are all intense colors. Of course, if I throw in some of the, oh, a little bit of the, say, the fluorescent stuff. Now I know I've uh, jacked it up even more. Um, so painting badly, you can always do something like this, right? You can uh, take a picture of it with your camera, and that's, uh, well, here, let's do this. Okay. Now, watch what happens when we bring back the color. Oh, look, super saturated colors. That's that's uh, fluorescent orange right there. Doesn't get much more saturated than that. This very desaturated, but uh, the way you're going to be able to really see that, take away the color. So I would suggest again, you every phone has one of those apps where you can kind of go in there and and take down the color and such. So I would suggest doing uh, something like that. So recalls mom again. I hope that uh, each day getting a little bit stronger. A little bit better and then uh, then when the PT comes along then that really starts to you get that much stronger a little more resilience so that is one way if you're not feeling super confident about uh, just how light or dark something might be now, it's easy enough right again just uh Take a picture with your phone, get rid of all of the saturation, and uh, well, there you go. Now you've uh, you've certainly brought it down to just the value. And it, it's uh, 
Now, of course, if you have the, the Logitech cameras, like, like I do here, you can just do that with a click of a mouse, which is uh, extra fun. Now, where's my... Is this one? This must be... Yep, that's the new one that I broke out yesterday. Uh, so what now actually now what did you have there at uh, Rico's mom for one what, what kind of vittles did you have? Hopefully something that was quite tasty Now at least try and dig into some of the uh, Some of the lighter stuff here now See if we can make this happen Hey there, Valfira. How you doing? Uh, so, Valfira, we must have summoned you because we had a film noir. We had a gratuitous film noir, which uh, summons the Valfira. So, Valfira, I hope that uh, you were able to get yourself some good sleep last night. Now, here, at least I remembered at the start to uh, to get that uh, my little bit of thinner sitting on top of that white so they would just kind of break down while I was uh, using other things Again, now uh, you can see the the difference the light in the hair starts to make we'll be going again back and forth with some of this stuff we might be toning down some things making other things later it's the the fantastic thing about the oils right is we can make all kinds of adjustments on the fly I'm going to get uh, a little bit more of this uh, turquoise stuff going on here on the clothes so that the skin tone can be that more of that reddish blue there. Ah, okay. And now, now Sarge, uh, well, I guess you're, you're, you're going to be even better buddies with, uh, with the folks that are, uh, shall we say, sharing their facilities with you. I said, uh, did I wish that uh, could have gone a whole lot faster and easier for you. But, I mean, well, dealing with what we're dealing with here, with the, uh, with the tree removal and stuff, I can really understand that. Because I thought for sure this weekend, but no, not this weekend. Who knows when or if they'll ever do it. And yes, that is uh, holding up a lot of other things too. Okay, now that we've done a little bit of that, again, that's the Prussian blue mixed with the radiant turquoise. Let's get some lighter stuff going into this here. I'm going to bring some of this fast matte white over here. Let's see what happens with some of our uh, wavy things. That's a highly technical painting term. Now, oh, that's fantastic, Sarge. Uh, you, you just be like one of the family. Yeah, Sarge, you know, the best, one of the great ways to, to meet new family. There you go. You, you've been adopted. So yeah, land dressed, uh, maybe uh, I gotta film a video tomorrow and Ken from Badger is supposed to be coming by here on his way back from Gen Con, so and then Monday I gotta do the mural thing. So I doubt if I'm gonna be doing anything with the printers tonight or Monday. So that uh, sounds like a Tuesday thing. Yeah, Sarge, uh, well that doesn't surprise me. Because even as I'm setting this up now, I'm sure probably a month from now, there will be changes made to it based on, well, utilizing it. And then who knows, maybe when it gets colder, things have to be shifted around some more. But at least now I think I know where I can use uh, that one folding table that I had gotten uh, again, to, to be able to work in the room with Kathy, obviously that's not needed anymore. And I think that's going to be going downstairs, and maybe that's where I do Chiru Box stuff.
Again, starting to, uh, starting to lighten up some of these here. Let's uh, do a similar thing over here, shall we? Hey there, Judge Dredd. Now, well, Judge Dredd, I hope that that printing goes uh, or spectacular so that you, like you said, you have plenty of stuff to uh, practice the oils on. We always want to wish successful prints for everybody. Actually, Landress, uh, we're, uh, I, I'm telling you, Landress, that Easterling terrain, the printing goes ever on made, that is really, that is some incredible stuff. I just, uh, I'll have to see, well, just for the heck of it, I might bring it in the Chidu box uh, for the any cubic and just see if it's actually possible to print that out there. Uh, Sarge, that's the other, I'm kind of worried about that here. You know what, I actually did throw away one thing of resin. It was, I was, wasn't really something I was probably going to use anyway, because it was really more for, it was an experiment uh, resin. But I, I need to start, it's not like the other stuff is, uh, it's not a year old yet. It's probably about five, six months or so. At, at uh, maybe not even that old. It might only be about four and a half, four months old. I can't see that it that, uh, starts to get a little bit of sharpness there. And what I'm going to do is add extra water effects to this once this has been, uh, once this is dried. So I might do a video on that. Who knows? I mean, I've done them before. You know, wait for a water effects thing to dry or something, or uh, wait for the oils to dry and then hit a uh, hit them with the uh, water effects. So having that uh, that control over the lights, that was at first I was more doing it just for. Uh, the aesthetics of it and such, and uh, kind of a, a little bit of a, oh, shall we say, sentimental reasons, and then I realized, oh my gosh, I needed to do this. So there we go, see, getting some more of our light colors in there. Let's do that here now. Yeah, that's just the radiant blue. It uh, gets mixed with the ultramarine blue. Why don't we, yeah, let's get some of our light in there. Uh, so we'll wrap through any sort of, uh, as far as maybe beverages go for your, uh, shall we say, not business stuff. Uh, what kind of stuff might you be partaking of medicine-wise? I've been fortunate here. I've been able to, again, find uh, a lot of the blackberry ginger ale each time I go to the store. So I just keep getting one or two of them every time I go there. Hopefully I'll be able to just uh, keep snagging those and make sure we have a good supply for over the winter. Although... Uh, a friend of mine did supply me with rum chata. Of course, my uh, my cup holder over here, my nifty cup holder that I got a few months ago, that's not really going to work for, well, the current uh, the current glass. I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. Never did get the uh, lighter colors here on the. Oh, I did. Okay, just these this part of the hands here. Oh, that sounds good there, Rasu. So yeah, I just uh, just chucked the uh, that one thing of resin is not really worth even experimenting with to see if it's any good or not. But the Soraya, actually, I found as I was looking for the for some bulbs, I found. Two containers of Sarah. One was smoky black and one was my uh, gray. I do uh, see that when you're using the gray, I mean, I always would uh, stir it 
in the vat anyway, even the next day. But oh my gosh, holy smokes. That step after sitting there for a few months, wow, it completely separates. There's like all of the gray just sinks to the bottom. And then the, uh, huh, the, the just basically clear resin left over. I mean, I'd seen something a little bit like it before, but wow, that was very, that was a long wait there. And again, Blades, if you wanted to share anything in the chat, things that you did on stream, and again, Drax, if you wanted to share all of the uh, the MCP stuff that you are painting on stream. And then, of course, well, there's the, the YouTube vid, right? Oh, and I think I did mention that as I was moving stuff around, was it yesterday or the day before, I found two cameras that I was originally going to be using for the battery ports. That's why they were downstairs. They just, they were out in the open until, well, all this stuff happened here over the last year, and then they just got progressively more buried. Yeah, that's, uh, I, I, that's well, that's what the blackberry ginger ale, actually, now, Kathy, obviously, she would have gin and ginger ale. I, I, I like that, too. That's That's kind of, well, that's where I got the idea of the blackberry ginger ale. Because I was going to the store to get her, her ginger ale. And then I went, what's this? Cranberry ginger ale. And then, wait a minute, what's this? Blackberry ginger ale. She she wasn't interested in those, which uh, worked out okay. Because, well, then I could just have them for me. You know what? I actually haven't gotten gin in a long, long time. Maybe I need to get some. I think, well, the rum is cheaper, so there's that. Hey there, Cookie Mandius, how you doing? Uh, let me see. Uh, oh, and that's the other thing, too, is that the curing machine, that has now been moved downstairs. So, yes, that won't be blasting me in the face as I'm trying to exercise or walk around in the living room or whatever. So, yeah, that is now downstairs also. So again, this is going to be a really long process. This is uh, this is more the beginning. It's not even the middle or the end. It's well, as someone once said, it's not even. It's uh, it's maybe the end of the beginning. That's what it is. Well, Cookie Mandy is great to see you again as always. Uh, now, Cookie, I guess everybody, uh, everybody Pyro Club ish has been really hitting the Diablo Four, I guess. Or is it, or, no, wait a minute, that actually wasn't Big Jim. He was doing Baldur's Gate, wasn't he? So, I mean, everybody, please give the Pyro Club a follow. Also, give Big Jim Slade a follow. Ah, uh, so now it's, uh, now it's Baldur's Gate. I know Big Jim was really huge into the, uh, was that the Seven Days to Die or something like that? That was the zombie game or whatever. Now, remember, this was a new brush last night, so still kind of trying to break that in a little bit. Hey there, Commander Mittens. So everybody please give Commander Mittens a follow. So Mittens, how you doing? Of course, Commander Mittens, if you want to share anything in the chat, I know you've been working on a ton of stuff. You want to share some of that in the chat so folks can see it? That'd be great. So, yes, the only video game I've even attempted to try and play in the last 10 years has been, uh, well, essentially it's the Battle of the Atlantic. And uh, no, it's not like World of Warships. <laughs> No, it's not one of those kind of games. This is much more of a kind of turn-by-turn turn sort of a thing. Well, we can get uh, much lighter here with our rock as well. Yeah, again, initially I was almost thinking of that as more like ice formations, but uh, glad that I just said, no, nah, let's make it more like rocks. 
Well, and same thing, Cookie Mandius. If you have uh, maybe some painted stuff that you wanted to share in the chat, go ahead. Oh, it happens fast. Don't blink. Cause what is it? Are we an hour in here? Not even. 54 minutes ago, there was uh, Zippo in the way of paint on this, which I know just shocks and surprises everybody, right? Uh, so Commander Mittens maybe has been playing a little bit of hooky from uh, from the painting. Somebody's been playing some hooky there. That's, uh, somebody's going to get in trouble. A little, little bit of B3 there, or BG3, I guess we'll call it. Here we go. Uh... I suppose, uh, well, each one is going to kind of uh, provide a little different thing. Now, which one would you say is better? Uh, you got two or three folks, they just want to hang out or something like that and just kind of be, well, in a group playing, well, maybe using a Discord or something like that. Is, is BG3 an easier thing to do with that, or is that maybe better with Diablo and, and BG3 is more of an individual loan kind of thing? Uh, so Commander Mittens actually has uh, has their name in the Baldur's Gate 3 credits. Well, congratulations there, Commander Mittens. Now, uh, geez, I don't know if you have uh, if you have any kind of Instagram post with what uh, what you did for BG3. Well, I, I don't know, maybe I don't know if that would. Uh, that wouldn't be problematic, would it, f to be posting that on your Instagram? I'm not, but you did it for him, and it's out. Maybe before it came out, not so much, but now that it's out. Yeah, just starting to find some of my lights. I am going to hit this now, though, with that dark, so we can have uh, something, again, to contrast this with. I'm just going to get this out of the way just some uh, some blue tack nothing nothing complicated here let me just use this brush and we'll use this again that is not it's not our uh, blackest black right there ah uh, so single player best for bg3 i thought so yeah okay that makes sense then that they okay i thought there had to be something different it couldn't just be mostly the same thing just with different names because I've just I know that a bunch of folks they play D4, they'll literally sit around the kitchen table and they're all playing D4, or some will be playing that obviously with their headsets and everything via the discords and such. So everybody, please check out that Twitter link right there. Again, that's uh, that's by Commander Mittens. You can see what Commander Mittens did for a Baldur's Gate 3. And then of course, please give Commander Mittens a follow if you could. All right, so yeah, that does help me see. Plus, do I added water effects here and some over there too? So I need that to also be later. Hey, Trader Legions, nice to see you again. Oh, it's been a while. Now, happy Saturday to you, of course. I hope everything's going really, really good. Now, Trader Legions, I'm I'm assuming you didn't do the Gen Con thing. I know there's there's a few folks that had to kind of at the sort of last minute not do Gen Con, and then there's other people who are at Gen Con. I went, you're at Gen Con? I didn't I didn't know I didn't think you were going there. Now uh, yeah, Trader Legion's uh, boy, oh boy, it's scary to think the last time I was there was 2019. Yeah, wow, that was the last time I was there. Well, that's uh. Again, given what's going on here the last four years, that's uh, that's been a common theme. I step into somebody's house and I say, when the heck did you do that? They said, well, three years ago. Because it's been four years since I've been in there. Yeah, Trader Legion, well, I guess. Well, and of course, well, ReaperCon, right? There's ReaperCon. Now, I, I suppose, would you say that, and we tell people this all the time, would Gen, uh, would did Adepticon really have more of kind of what you'd be after anyways? I try to tell that with people with Gen Con. They say, oh, it's really big. 
But I'll say, yeah, it is. Miniatures? Uh, tiny part of it. Again, a really small part of it, to the degree that every year I'd be sitting there in this little tiny corner of the back of the dealer's room or something like that, I'd be painting miniatures, and people would be coming up to me. I'm going to start using some brilliant yellow pale here, by the way. And I'd say, what the heck are you doing here? Instead of going around the dealer's room, and they'd say, you're the only one who's painting miniatures in this gigantic place. You're the only one. Which I always found intriguing. Now, what am I going to use here for a blending brush? I want to get me... Uh, we'll just use this thing right here. We'll use this. So here we have a case of sort of the indigo and the brilliant yellow pale kind of combining together to make a little bit of a gray. So again, not uh, so much of a blue here. We actually have this sort of a lighter yellow for some of our rocks here. And we'll let that, of course, it's going to mix into the indigo that's here. There's a little bit of the Mars black as well. A little bit of that. Uh, so, Valfira, I think I sent you pictures of uh, of what I was doing today with the printers and, and the, that table. I was talking about yesterday shifting everything around, a whole new table for it. So I, I, I could swear that I sent you some pictures there. Sorry if I didn't. But it was uh, only uh, maybe about an, not even an hour before I started streaming, I think. Here we go. Now, uh, here's more of their brilliant yellow pale again. So Commander Mittens, uh, uh, will, you, will you be doing more stuff? Obviously, it won't just end at Baldur's Gate 3, right? There's always going to be new versions. Is it one of those things, like, uh, if you kind of get in there and you do some stuff for it, uh, it becomes almost like a legacy thing? You know, the next time they're doing the, the next version, you'll be able to uh, have some work on it there? So yeah, Judge Dredd, I mean, that's uh, like ReaperCon. I would, if I had a TARDIS, I would be there all the time. Heck, I would just be hanging around the Reaper factory all the time. But unfortunately, it's just, uh, it's one of those things that we're just too far away. Especially since I'm not just bringing me, it's obviously all the other stuff that has to come along with me. And there's just no good way to do that. We tried three different ways and none of those three worked out well and it would only be worse now because that was all pre kind of disease of completely unknown origin uh, oh that's fantastic there commander mittens yeah that's really uh say hey, congratulations now as uh well i guess said uh, that the question I'm trying to spit out here is, uh, is any of that work something that you can do on stream? Or is it just, no, this is all too much uh, private, uh, too much NDA action there to be able to maybe stream any of that work? Now, let me see if I can go back to some, some dark here, the uh, Prussian blue. Oh, I was almost tempted to grab some of the uh, pearling black. I'm going to with the Prussian blue and the phthalo green. Ah, uh, so there's some NDA action for sure. And just as soon as I went to ask the question, I thought, now, nah, but any money, there's a, there's some NDA involved. I would suppose that at a certain point, then that kind of, that list, once the release happens at least. Yeah, I should probably get more of the blueish skin up there. Actually, no, I might have to just do more light, because I don't know. Oh, where's my, ah, okay. <laughs> so we're, we'll make indigo green. Thalo green and indigo makes us indigo green. Uh, 
Let's see, uh... Ah, uh, geez, yeah, Velfira, um... Now that I, I have to, uh, figure out, okay, uh, sort of side table type stuff, is that some more darks in here in, in the face, around the eyes? Now, uh, for things like the... Yeah, and the lips, too. For the curing machine. And then uh, setting up another computer down there to be able to use to make uh, things like the build plates and chew box. So again, uh, this is uh, essentially the, an indigo green. The indigo blue... Thalo green mixed together. Just reasons, whatever. I might still try to get a little bit of gold into some areas here. But that's going to be reflecting uh, quite a bit of our green. Hey there, Antifreeze. Great to see you back. Appreciate you being here as always. Again, here's hoping everybody's Saturday has been uh, well, as fun as possible. See over here, I'm just going to mix some of that green in there. That's the, the radiant green. And then I'm going to start throwing this uh, here where, uh, well, we have something that is supposed to be gold-ish. Uh -huh, I can get some of that over there. Two. Huh. Take some of this, and somehow we didn't, uh, with all the pre glaze that we did, it didn't manage to get down into there. Thank you so much, Grand Oracle. So, Grand Oracle, this is, uh, believe it or not, this is a little bit of a test here for a, a tutorial video that I want to do. I've got some some 3D printed miniatures are basically water fairies and I'm going to be doing some major, major, major colossal kind of water splashy effects and stuff with that. And obviously I want to kind of do this with it, right? All the different shades of blue, some that are more of a reddish blue, some more of a turquoise or turquoise we sometimes say here. So this is a little bit of a test for that one uh, coming down the line. I actually, I had that prepped. I've got the uh, the wooden plaque all sanded, ready to go. And I'll probably be filming that in the, uh, in my, when my new filming area, because it's uh, of a substantial size. Ah, uh, so just, uh, just doing the practices. All right, trying to get me more of the uh, kind of a gold-ish appearance here. And maybe even these, so instead of more of the green, maybe I'll just do those as gold too. What the heck? Uh, well, sorry to, sorry to hear that there, Valfira. Now, today I got a, a kind of a weird surprise as a... Now, of course, when I'm doing the, uh, when I'm washing off the, the resin, I always have, I'm usually triple gloved, at least on my one hand. Like, one hand is double gloved, the other one's triple gloved. Here, I just had single gloves, because all I wanted to do was just move the printers. Next thing I know, I look down at my hand, and there's a gigantic hole in the glove. Literally, my whole thumb sticking out of there. What the heck happened with this glove? I mean, they're, they, these, uh, they're nitro gloves. They're not that old. I haven't used them in, okay, a few months. I'm like, they don't degrade in the house in the course of a month or two. So that was a wee bit of a surprise, I have to say. And I just, uh, needless to say, I washed my hands uh, very thoroughly right away after that. Ah, uh, oh, the toe re-injury. Well, oh, yeah, speaking of injuries there, Grand Oracle, hopefully... A certain individual is uh, is well on track for that uh, that goal. I know I keep asking all the time, but hopefully that's uh, 
everything is all looking looking a okay for that so yeah Velfira typically when I'm uh, doing the with the gloves uh, basically what I'll do is I'll have the the glove that's on my hand the 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 lower glove we'll just call it the lower glove well that one is a pristine brand new glove what I'll do is I'll take the other gloves uh, well that were the outer glove or the inner glove last time those become the outer glove so the basically the used glove is the one on the outside that's just kind of protect the inner one so it doesn't tear and that seems to have worked fairly well I know that uh, Kathy, she tried to get me these really thick gloves, and that was a disaster because I couldn't feel anything. <laughs> it's like I just was dropping everything. I said, "Well, this is this is going to be more dangerous than anything else, dropping things with resin in them and stuff." So that's uh, I ditched those right away. I just said I'd rather wear three pairs of these nitrile gloves than wear one pair of those. Ah, that's uh, well, so, well. Sorry about that, uh, Grand Oracle. Now here, I'm going to dispense with all of the yellows. Here we're going to go right to brilliant yellow pale, so that these uh, lights here are going to be much on the much more on the cooler side of things. Hey there, Halligan. Now Halligan, I think I sent you a picture of uh, what I was doing today. I could be wrong, but I, I could swear I sent you a picture of what I was doing today, trying to get the printer, the new printer area set up. That, that's really just a start. There will be more stuff added to that, uh, well, maybe tomorrow, but definitely next week. So nice to see you again, hell again, happy Saturday. And of course, if you if uh, any of you are at Gen Con or heading there for a you know one day pass or something like that, maybe tomorrow, be sure to stop by the Armored Wolf booth if you could. And of course, please uh, maybe snag some of those fabulous leather goods there. It hasn't been the easiest of Gen Cons for Armored Wolf with the whole pallet situation and everything else. So we definitely want to give Armored Wolf plenty of support. Again, just trying to work in some some lighter things here that also maybe are tint a little bit more towards uh, towards the gold here. Of course, we're gonna have to have lots of uh, reflections on stuff here too. Not sure what that's. Eh. Not sure what we wanted that to be yet. Uh, so Grand Oracle, they just had to give up on it because, well, the company that they were using went out of business and there was just no way to get it to Seattle. And they're, they kind of have to just, uh, unfortunately, cut the losses and say, well, we needed, to, we needed to get the Dragon Con. So instead of trying to fool around with it more, as it is, it'll be more expensive just to get it to Dragon Con than, than it would have been otherwise. So unfortunately, it uh, kind of just went uh, to the point of no return. So yeah, hell again, the, the nice thing is that... Uh, it, it literally is directly under a heat vent. Uh, that is pretty much one of the warmest areas of the entire basement right there. And it's also the area that probably has the most light during the day. So I will be getting some curtains for the window that's right there. 
Actually, I might, I, might, I should do insulating curtains in the basement like I'm doing up here. Let me see if I can get some more light green over here. So we just, uh, I just wanted to kind of uh, introduce some of that. Here, let me get some of the mm, radiant turquoise. Okay, all right, we'll see what happens. Radiant turquoise. And the fast matte white. I don't know what that's going to do. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry about that hell again. Nothing with too light. Thalo green. What about this? Hopefully that's not too light. Uh, so yeah, Grand Oracle. While they were in transit, because the, the pallet was sitting there on the floor of the convention center like it was supposed to be, and then when the company went under... All pallets that were out were uh, basically sent back to their point of origin. And that's, that's I guess, why it ended up in Seattle. Because it was on its way back to Alaska. And uh, clearly uh, not going to do them much good in Alaska, Seattle, or Illinois. Any of the places where it was or where it was uh, headed for. And I am concerned, too, that there won't be some kind of weird cross-pollination or something weird that happens where all of a sudden then uh, there's a miscommunication with these guys and, and then Dragon Con also is going to be for Smizzled. Hmm. Glad that I did that lighter. Again, that's just the... Uh, Radiant turquoise, a little bit of the uh, phthalo green. Might even fool around with a little bit of freehand in some places. There, I don't know. We'll we'll see. Don't have to figure that out right now. That's for sure. More my lighter green over here. So the skin tone, very much an ultramarine blue. I'll definitely have to find, I think I've got some some other ones too, uh, some 3D printable ones of the 72 mil variety where we can do a, a color scheme similar to this. It would be even easier to see some of the uh, transitions between the, the skin tone and the things here, like the fabrics, I guess. Uh, so Halligan, the big printer is already on there. So the Mono X and the Anycube, or the uh, and the Sonic Mini 4K are both on there already. Also, the UPC backup is on there. Also, the uh, actually the little heater is on there too. All of my jars of resin are on there. All the tools that I need are on there. So all the stuff that normally would just have to be kind of sitting on the, another table or whatever, or upstairs, those are all now down there. Hey there, Janet. Nice to see you. Hopefully you are doing really well too. Happy Saturday to you. And of course, well, it's uh, I'm sure it's Sunday in a whole bunch of places now too, especially for Recall's mom. And hopefully again, Recall's mom is enjoying some very tasty roast beef. Oh, wow, look at this. See, I had to wait for that to set. Is the last time I tried putting this on there, yeah, it wasn't really having much effect because that paint was, it was just too wet there. Ah, so it's a very, very early Sunday for Jana there. So Jana, I hope that you're doing well. Hopefully you were able to maybe uh, do a little bit of uh, painting this, this weekend on such, uh, on stuff. 
I know. Well, sometimes uh, weekends are just, well, working on the house. I mean, I'm, clearly that's what I've been doing this uh, weekend as well. And yeah, hell again, there's uh, some lights right in the area there that I can, with the remote control, I tried using the uh, the Casa smart bulbs. Unfortunately, the phone couldn't make any connection with them there. So I gave up on that and I said, all right, fine, I'm going to use these ones where I just uh, use the remote because I don't need 16 million colors. <laughs> what I just need to be able is dim it down or maybe change it to like a blue or something. Something that's not going to uh, cure the resin. But I just realized I got to find me some uh, some insulating curtains that are very very small. I think I'll do that. Well, tonight after the stream. Now, hell again, huh, I haven't had a chance to put uh, any light in the in the in the old uh, Sonic Mini 4K. So still haven't done that yet. But at least it's a heck of a lot easier to get to. Now, Helligan, I don't know if you heard the story that I was relating earlier where when I went to move the Anycubic, the Mono X, which weighs a ton, by the way. I'm going to get some dark here on the other side of this. All right. Prussian blue. Yeah, I'll just use the Prussian blue for this. Ah, there we go. That's better. So I went to lift this thing up. And I went, what the heck is this piece of cardboard under it for? And then I realized the vat on that thing is so big, and the table it was on was so unlevel in that one part that I had it on that I had to shimmy that thing up so that it literally wouldn't just start flowing out of the vat. Uh, well, uh, Dina, I hope that uh, you can get that and uh, get back to the printing. I am, uh, I'm kind of in the same thing. I'm trying to, well, we're, we're doing a big process of recovery here. And thanks again, uh, Arathu, for posting a link to the GoFundMe campaign. And the GoFundMe campaign, uh, that is to, uh, that's for all these, well, the mega projects here. So that we can try and get everything back online again kind of the way it was only hopefully better so yeah now it is again it's on a it's on a giant oak solid oak drafting table that is at least a hundred years old maybe older and it also weighs at least a couple of hundred pounds maybe eh, 250 maybe 300 pounds something like that that was fun moving that thing around especially since uh, when I moved it there was still at least a couple of hundred pounds of stuff that there was no room to move anywhere needless to say we've uh, we've had some physical work over the last two months thank you so much Arathu appreciate that so yeah, everybody that's already contributed to that, uh, much appreciated. It certainly has helped a bunch, and of course, well, those uh, that's what's gonna help take care of things. Like, well, again, the new garage as a uh, work area. We've been trying to plan that out, the the best way to get the ventilation in there. Obviously, secure it. Even even the door, not going to have one of those regular doors. We're going to have one of those four-foot doors so that I can get, well, foam in there much easier. Uh, get work tables in there easier. So thanks again, Arathu. Appreciate that. I know it... Uh, I haven't had a chance to uh, to write some of the thank yous yet. Uh, I'll I'll do that as soon as I can. I always I try to keep up with those to, to write some thank yous to the folks that have again contributed to that. 
Uh, you know what? I'm going to switch gears. I want me some of this Thilo Green. Ah, there we are. It was all getting, uh, it was kind of light and middle tone. Now I have some dark. I think now I can come back in there with some of the uh, heftier highlights, and that's really going to do something now. Oh, thanks, Janet. Yeah, unfortunately, in May, they went into the hospital, and that was that was how things ended. And that was a mid-May. Now, I appreciate again all of the support that that folks have shown. That that you know, while that was going on, and then of course afterwards, because uh, sometimes the afterwards uh, doesn't necessarily always uh, stick in people's mind as much so appreciate everybody that's uh, kept us in mind all this time uh, so yeah trader legions oh gosh yes. and i know a bunch of people that because of circumstance they had to uh, do new houses or you know get a get a different house and I mean, they're not quite as bad as they were for my brother law and sister back in uh 1980, but uh, still bad enough. So yes, uh, of course, uh, spending goes up, interest rates go up. I've, well, I've been in this house a wee while, and I'm going to be in this house a whole lot longer. So fortunately, that is not something that I need to worry about. I do feel bad for all the folks that uh, that becomes a major impediment for them. Nice to see you again there, Elite. Nice to see you. I hope that your Saturday was a fun one. Having some fun here, uh, being able to break out the Ultramarine Blue from uh, Williamsburg. Well, Pure Vita, thank you so much for being here as always. And I hope we will see you on the Monday, well, Monday into Tuesday stream. It's the Muse Day. <laughs> Thanks again, Pure Vita. And I uh, hope your Sunday is a good one as well. Now, the, even this fast matte white already is kind of getting tainted by some of the uh salo green there we have to probably get some more of our our fast matte white out here so that we really have a nice pure batch of it i need to lighten this up a smidge Never really did anything over here. I've got to... The heck with it. <laughs> Why am I screwing around going to Mexico or when all I need to do is this? What the heck am I doing? There. Look at that. That's uh, precision brushwork right there. You don't see that on other channels. Alright, let's see. You know what? I'm just going to get me a paper towel here. And we'll do this. Oh, thank you so much, Jane. Appreciate that. Again, it all will uh, really, really, really help. Uh, Halligan, I only saw... Uh, I think it was Mary Prophet. She paints a bunch of Dark Sword stuff. And uh, the official, right? She's one of the official folks that paints stuff. And uh, she had posted something, so I figured, yeah, Dark Sword must have done a new release. Now, Dark Sword miniatures really are fantastic. Now, I do have a few videos for folks that... Uh, it was interesting because people said, Oh, I'm not used to working with metal miniatures. What do I do with these? And I went, <laughs> That was just interesting for me as, as someone who still has to deal with metal miniatures all the time between Dark Sword 
and Lord of the Rings. So I actually made a couple of videos that, that kind of show how uh, how you can deal with metal miniatures in an easier fashion. Now that uh, shading on that took about all of two seconds, right? So thanks again, Jane. Appreciate that. And again, I'll uh, I'll shoot you a message there too. Much appreciated. And kind of feel you in on things, so that you're you're up to speed there. So thank you so much. Oh, yeah, let's. Uh, I'm still gotta think about. Still thinking about maybe some freehand in there. So a little more of our. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. This, mm, I'm just going to let the uh, blending brush do something there. Same over here. A little more green there. Ooh, and there's a weird hard line right there. We're going to get rid of that. Probably need some more of my light here, too. Let me see if I can do something for the eyes. Maybe I'll just stick with Brilliant Yellow Pale for those. So that's uh, the uh, radiant blue mixed with basically some of our uh, fast matte white. I could, Gina, um, I, I just it just occurred to me now you can get the the Gamlin colors right because I know there's a there's a bunch of folks in Europe there they've uh, found places that have the Gamlin colors there. But if you can get the Gamlin colors, definitely try to get yourself the, the Radiant colors. Those are absolutely amazing and fantastic. I know that there's uh, some sites in I think it's Gerstecker. That's a German site. And hopefully that's something that, well, since it's... Uh, that would also be for the rest of the EU, too, not just for Germany. Now, uh, did you, which, uh, did you, uh, no, I'm, I'm assuming you just kind of gotten them a little bit at a time. Uh, what's the ones we always talk about first? I think Radiant Turquoise, Radiant Green, and Radiant Violet. If you're going to get the, let's say, get them in batches of three. That is that's something that I suggest is you start with those three. Kind of your next batch would probably be radiant blue, radiant yellow, and radiant magenta. Those would be the next three that I would suggest. So I'll take 20 years for the Radiant Green. Was that a, that's a Series 2. Now on Dick Blick, whoops, wrong shelf. Series 2, Dick Blick, that should be somewhere in the $12 range. 12 to 14 maybe, maybe 14, 15. Uh, you know, and you know, I, I still have to experiment with that yet. I have it here. I, I still, I'm, I'm just been trying to set up kind of the ideal experiment to use that with. Where we would really see that versus, say, something like, well, the fast matte white, which is what I really tend to use. Uh, I did use the quick dry white uh, quite a bit. I was actually using that on the mural. Yeah, but most of the mural actually is painted with the uh, quick dry white. You know what? The Egyptian violet, a little bit of the radiant violet together. Let me see what that's going to give me in a couple of spots here. Like on the uh, lower lip here. Uh, 
All right. I'll have to go lighter. Uh, maybe we'll just have to go straight up radiant violet here. See what happens. And actually get rid of some of that <laughs> over here. No, I might just have to go with this. Now that's got, again, some of our uh, fast matte white in there, too. Boy, uh, Grant Oracle, I suppose, ooh, I don't know, do we need to gear up for a Labor Day sale on Dick Blick? Because uh, I'm guessing that would be the next most likely day for them to have some kind of big sale. I just uh, I just realized that. So I might have to set some pennies aside for, uh, for Labor Day. Ah, okay, there we are. That's... Could have tried to make that lighter and lighter and lighter. It wouldn't have made a darn bit of difference. I needed to go darker. So yeah, Dick Blick is really, it's fantastic. Uh, again, don't, uh, well, I try to say never pay full price for anything. It sounds like an ad, but uh, on Dick Blick, you really don't have to. I'm going to use the Radiant Turquoise up here on that cloth. Oh, this, uh, this side here. I don't want that to get too close to what we're doing over here with our water. Now also to keep in mind that after all this dries, I want to actually tack on some more water effects there. So that was the other reason, well, Ah, here we go. That was the other reason we started doing stuff like this, right? Especially with all the fluorescent stuff, because these, they're not cheap here in the U.S., and they I believe they do not ship outside. I know a few people have found these outside the U.S., so instead of trying to get these things, fluorescent powder, linseed oil, mix your own. And that, that worked out just fine. We did the same thing for things like the interference colors because those, guess what, also pricey. As in really pricey. So yeah, that's just a, a way to try and uh, make it a little more universal, but also maybe a little less expensive. Is it as convenient, maybe, as just going to a store and buying a tube of paint? Well, probably not. But you certainly get exactly the consistency that you want. No doubt about that. Look at that. I'm just taking this brush, shoving that down there, and it all just does all that blending for me. So again, these are from Eldfall Chronicles. Uh, what's interesting, Halligan, is that my, my old art school, uh, when it moved yet again, just a few blocks down Michigan Avenue, downtown, uh, it's, it's actually in the... Uh, it's on the floor above the Utrecht store. And that's where we used to go. Uh, let's see, oh yeah... Uh, one one of the uh, Book of Wampo Commandments <clears throat> it actually dates back all the way to Academy days. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's terra rosa. <clears throat> and that actually had something to do with uh, the fact that everybody would run over to the uh, the Utrecht store and get the Utrecht terra rosa. And that was the only place that had terra rosa. Now, this needs a, I want to get the, <clears throat> a decent amount of the, uh, my, uh, my phthalo green in there. 
Let me see if I can lighten that up some more. <clears throat> also, too, we're going to take my paper towel to this here. So two hours ago, there was no paint on this. We did a really simple pre-glaze. Phthalo blue, or sorry, Prussian blue, a little bit of indigo here and there. Little touch of maybe, not even, no, we didn't even do the phthalo green anywhere. It was literally just that. Uh, so I'm not sure where uh, Utrecht is made, but... Uh, uh, which I'm gonna call it uh, Williamsburg is is made in New York, right? Or at least I don't know. Is it New York State or is it actually made in say a suburb of New York City? Which right there just put me in mind of a pace salsa commercial. Um Try and lighten this up too. Okay, just using the uh, blending brush for that. Let it do its thing. More radiant turquoise. All right, let's see what happens here. Sure enough, yeah, that's uh, doing some fun blending there. So I wasn't the only one that thought of that. Okay, that's good. Because I was starting to think... Uh, I was just waiting for somebody to type in the uh, chat there, uh, somebody get a rope. Because wasn't that how the commercial went there, Landrast? I do believe it went something along those lines. You know what? Let me try this here. So this is just a straight-up radiant green here. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, we need to be shifting some of these colors around. That seems to do it fairly well. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh Ooh, that uh, that uh, Well, that's a uh, that's a little bit of a bind right there. Grand Oracle could be a a fatal choice. Yeah, let me do this. Same thing with the... Uh, no, no, not over there, but maybe down here. Okay. So the radiant green there. Yeah, do something over here. We haven't done anything back there except uh, pre-glaze. It's a little bit bouncy. There's really nothing supporting that. It just is, uh, well, attached up there. Uh, thanks, Elite. It's uh, always a really fun, fun little color demonstration. Now, oh, uh, yeah, I'm actually going to get some of this. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Ultramarine violet. Now, we've done indigo violet. This is the first time we made our own ultramarine violet, and man, this is a, a thousand times nicer than... I don't even think that that satanic color is even in here, that ultramarine violet. I don't see it. Is that it over here? Oh, there it is. Yeah. This this is a colossal disappointment right here. Boy, we haven't used this in years. I think the last time I used this was certainly in 2020 right here. And what is it? Well, it's only a Series 2, so not so bad, but, yeah, say uh, the uh, Ultramarine Blue from Williamsburg and the Egyptian Violet from Williamsburg, bingo. Now, when we do a film noir, there's not going to be any greenish blues, reddish blues, none of that. It's just going to be shades of sepia gray. I mean, yeah, there's there's some value stuff going on, but boy, it's you just you lose any. There's just no color contrast there. Let me go a little. There we go. All right. So these are from the actual game boxes themselves. And uh, what I was hoping to do today was try and prep a few more. However, the project 
with uh, getting the printer table ready and all that other stuff that just took up a whole earlier portion of the day didn't even get a chance to uh, edit the next youtube video that's the other thing i have to do when when the, the stream is over here is get to that you know i'm gonna grab another one of these to use as a blending brush so it's pretty wild to see that isn't it valfera every time it just kind of never disappoints does it now, Velfair, I don't know, uh, well, it's, it's almost 10. Well, it's almost 10 for you also. So I wasn't sure if it was going to be a sleepy time for you pretty soon. Thank you so much, Frozen Toes. No Frozen Toes right now, unless you're really, really close to an air conditioner. But uh, you, you get too close to this thing, you get kind of cold. Thank you so much, Frozen Toes. Appreciate that. Yeah, we got to work in some more of our uh, light there too. But right now, using the uh, it's the ultramarine violet, mixing ultramarine blue and the Egyptian violet together. Now, uh, yeah, Jen, if you have uh, if you've got the an ultramarine, if you've got the violet, I don't know, I might want to give that a try too. Kind of like your conacrinone and uh, viridian combo there. Uh, frozen toes. I was just joking that uh, when it comes to be winter time here, and I, I want to have my uh, the hot chocolate as the backup medicine here. That uh, that's not going to go in this cup holder because with the new new desk here, yeah, to make any space for that, I need to actually uh, attach a cup holder to the table. I've got a few things attached to the table here. These uh. It's basically vertical magnetic pegboard. So it's it's heavy. It weighs a ton because it's metal. But yes, it is a magnetic pegboard. And it's really, there's some shelves on it. That's actually, I got some of my miniatures on the shelves. So it actually increased the table space significantly. Ooh, I'm liking this. This violet here in the hair. We're going to do some more of that. We're definitely going to do some more of that. Also... On the clothes, I think. Some more violet there. Uh, well, Velfira, well, I get Velfira if you want to shoot uh, your Instagram link to the to the dragon. All those uh, all those scales, all those big pieces to it. Let me. Uh, okay. Going to restore some of the edges on these things here. Uh, so again, Grand Oracle, they're all uh, resin cast miniatures. However, uh, they, they're really easy to put together, and it's almost like they were individually printed. Uh, that The mold lines are few and far between. It was it was shocking, really. I have to say. Obviously, I would much prefer the STLs because then we could print them out bigger, right, Grand Oracle? So let me see. Where's my Quinacrinol magenta? Is that up here somewhere? Oh, I also want to see. Did I try it in this too? No, nope, that's my thalo green there. Oh, oh, there's, there was this. So this was the fast mat stuff. They were on clearance, and this is the quinacrinone red. And so we, who knows? Maybe we'll give this a shot too. Uh, I don't know if there's a regular quinacrinone red somewhere. I don't know. Hmm, okay, the fingers here. I'm going to try and use this again, the uh, ultramarine violet here for some shading there. 
So the skin tone in some ways starts to get a little bit shifted even more towards the violet. It was kind of there already, but now even more so. Okay, I need to do that on these fingers up here. That needs to get some of our more yellowish. So, uh, radiant green, stalo green, yeah, look, at, look like that. And we'll start to lighten this up too. So, Gina, uh, I think we'll. Uh, I think there's been some Dark Sword videos too, where we've utilized the Kornakinone Magenta. There's a couple of those uh, figures that I've got prepped up. Oh, I also want to do. Uh, ironically enough, the next Dark Sword video will be in acrylics, where I try out the. Cephalopod Studios paint? Is that who that is? Whatever it is, it's the new stuff from Creature Caster. And that, uh, actually that was sent for Kathy. But I, I just figured, well, it, it's here. I'll try to use it and we'll compare it to our oils. And the best way to do this is to take a Dark Sword figure that was painted in oils. And then paint that exact same figure in that same color scheme but paint it in acrylics. Because painting stuff in acrylics is, well, and Grand Oracle, we've talked about it a bunch of times, right? How uh, that's actually a really good way. Uh, going back and forth between the acrylics and oils, sometimes you get a chance to really see how it is with the acrylics that the difference in applying things so with the oils right the paint is just smooth so easy to uh, apply and push around whereas the acrylics again it's it's sort of like a peanut butter mixed with gravel and super glue compared to the oil paints i mean i'm not trying to be uh i'm trying to be a weisenheimer there it just is because the last video where I was working with the acrylics, which I think was maybe this one. Was it the Faramir miniature? I think it was this one. Where everything had to be painted in acrylics. Yeah, I think that was where it just, again, it really stood out to me that, oh my gosh. Uh, these acrylics really, <laughs> they are it's just so different from applying the oils as far as how rough or smooth they are. And that that's for sure, Grand Oracle. That is uh, no doubt about it. That's a no man and man. I hope that again you had yourself a really fun Saturday, and I hope everybody's gonna have a great Sunday as well. I know again for a bunch of folks, it's already Sunday. We still have a couple of hours left of Saturday here. You see it? Ah, that's a little. Br yeah, that's uh, that is brighter. I'm gonna make it even more so with some of the uh, really yellow pale. Uh, just uh, the uh, the oil paints is sort of like that nice smooth restaurant butter that just flows onto the bread so nicely, and then you've got the acrylics which you almost need a steam shovel to get those on, which is why people run into problems initially with the oil paints because they're used to doing that with the, lots of liquid, lots of paint, tons of layers, hashtag no layers, not with the oil paints, you don't need to do that. Uh, oh, doing some orkified stuff there. I know it's been a while since I painted orc stuff on the stream. I think, uh, well, probably the Def Copter was the last orky thing that we did. We even did the base of that. Yeah, we sculpted the base of that on stream. 
and painted it on stream. Let's do oh, landing yes. brush here. I'm going to use the radiant yellow. Now, now, there we go. Cause, yeah, that was just looking disturbingly like another like a little snowball there or something. Didn't want that. Hey there, Comp Native. How you doing? Well, we've got four minutes left of Saturday here. So, Comp Native, great to see you again. Hope that you had yourself a really great day. For sure. Oh, yeah, that's going to help, too. So, boy, that really... I hope, yeah, you can see that. You can see we did, the again, the asphaltum, kind of a reddish-brown, deep reddish-brown, and then uh, using some of the brilliant yellow pale, and that really did uh, change up that color. Separates it from the stone very nicely. Thank you so much for the clip there, Bithron. Appreciate that, as always. Hmm, no, I'm just going to go all the way back to that because this is another thing where we kind of lost the edge on that. It got way too thick. And that's a little bit too much uh, towards the green. So what I'm going to do... Ultramarine blue, some of our violet here. Trying to get some dark on the foot here because it looks like even with our pre-glaze there, we didn't quite get all of that. Mm, I'm going to try to darken down by the ankle there. All right, now let's go back. The uh, radiant blue, some of the ultramarine blue. Combine that together. Looking for sort of a light middle tone here. Bingo. So, Comp Native, great to see you again. Yeah, this is from Eldfall Chronicles. They just did a Kickstarter campaign last month. Yeah, last month. And we've uh, painted... Is this the third one I've painted on? Yeah, this is the third one I've painted on stream. Plus, I also did a uh, tutorial video on one. These are cast, res regular cast resin miniatures, but super easy to uh, get put together and prepped and such. Yeah, that's better. Oh, yeah, see, I was just about to th throw some light on their butt, then I saw this. What makes this stand out? The dark over there. Right, because now this has, so we always talk about foreground, middle ground, background. Because of this thing, we sort of have a foreground, a middle ground, and then we have this back here. That's our background. So, and it was the same thing uh, this way, right? We have to think this is our foreground here, and then this ends up being our background. Uh, actually, no mana man. Ironically enough, as I was well doing all that stuff in the basement there, moving things around, I ended up f running across a box of uh, cast resin cast signum figures because yes uh, I always keep thinking of signum as having the STL files which it does but they're one of the very wise folks that does a little bit of each they have STL files but they also have cast resin files so if you don't have a printer you can still get those Obviously, having a printer is great because you can print up as many as you need and also uh, maybe whatever size you need. 
Okay, that, let me get a little more of my light right there. That foot, I'm gonna try and, yeah, go back to this uh, ultra marine ish mid tone landing brush. I'm just going to pull that over to the side there. The area where I can't actually get a brush to really just put any paint. Ah, that's fantastic, no man to man. Uh, I hope that you have fun with them. I always, uh, always like theirs because it does remind me so much of the old confrontation miniatures. When Kathy and I, when we first got started doing our miniature painting years and years ago, back in well, 2000, 2001, they they were kind of a brand new thing at the time. No one had really done stuff the way they did. No one had really, uh, you didn't see a lot of the stuff painted the way they did. So that was kind of a groundbreaking thing, sort of like now where you have all of the the digital sculpting, the STL files, and the printing. So there we have a, uh, that's more of our ultramarine blue right there. Now the uh, the Signum stuff, that's going to be much more on the stylized end of things, kind of like the Artisan Guild. Love me some Artisan Guild, but it is among the more stylized miniatures that I paint. But sometimes it's good to do some while we're talking about doing different genres and systems and scales. I mean, I'm doing everything here. I'm doing uh, busts and small scale, large scale, all those different things. And you, it does, you see things when you're working in one type of scale or genre that maybe you can apply to the other. Got that lighter stuff in there. I don't think I'll, I'm going to try to go a little darker in here. Maybe I'll just take the indigo. Ooh, I hope that's not too too dark. <clears throat> just looking to get that in a couple of these uh, recesses here on the ponytail. And let me see if I can find, though. There, I have some of the... Uh, ar hey, here we go. This is my army painting series. And again, the, they're definitely more on the stylized side of things. I think we actually, is this another one here? Yeah, so see again, a little bit more stylized maybe than most. Uh, well, well it, was it the chibi stuff? Yeah, that's the other thing too. I know uh, there's a, there were some streamers, they used to do it years ago, and they, they streamed uh, chibi stuff. I know we were talking the last couple of streams about the folks that used to stream. Don't really see them anymore. Again, I need to uh, message Avocado Kids and see if he's uh, still doing okay. I don't think Zulamandi streams anymore. Or Plushy. Okay. Oh boy, I'm gonna try and do the same thing over there. I got the uh got my violet over here. That's about what I can get away with there. Any more oh yeah, here let's do it. We have just a big old light blob right there. That's uh that is not what we wanna see. So yeah, they used to paint the chibi, and then of course, uh, oh, Toon Tanks, or that, what, Tank Toon, or something like that, where they were basically chibi tanks. So you would see a T-3485, but in chibi fashion. Uh, I, I remember seeing someone painted a, a Firefly with, well, a Toon Tank. I think they even did planes, too. I could swear they even did, insanely enough, a T-35. Hey there, Acid Burn. How you doing? 
But uh, remember Drew? Uh, Thunderdome, Drew, he used to stream. And uh, well, Avocado Kids, I just remember he would play the harmonica on his stream. And well, he did Terrain. I think that that was the other thing that was really great is that uh, Avocado Kids would be working on Terrain. So I did a little bit of a, well, again, uh, brushstroke management over there. So World War Tunes, that's what they're called. And uh, quite because I'm sure there's a tiger. I don't know if there's a K tiger. It might be a King tiger and, and tiger, or the, sorry, the tank tunes. I wasn't sure if they went to more current armor vehicles. Oh, uh, acid burn. Well, uh, that's that's what I've been doing. Actually, the entire, gosh, entirety of pretty much the last month, every single day, down there trying to uh, make that new printing area, which finally moved the printers there today. There, and they are actually hooked up, but I've got to now. Uh, do some of the other aspects of that again have set up a table for the curing machine but uh, unfortunately it, it took me weeks just to hammer my way through to those areas because again the the basement was the first place that I had to abandon when Kathy got sick and that was that was a big work area exercise area for me but again I had to just kind of not use that anymore because I had to be within a certain distance and that was way too far away. Hey there Big Chimpo, nice to see ya. Yeah, brushstroke management here. It is hilarious how this thing moves around. I did actually get some glue there. It shouldn't be bouncing around there and separating from the arm. Oh, actually maybe it's not. No, it is. Yeah, acid burn. Uh, it will be nice to be able to well, also even exercise again in a more regular fashion. And that'll happen uh, again once I, I, I kind of reached, a, I think, a tipping point. Because it really felt like I was going upstream with no paddle. And then it kind of just reached a point where I said, oh, I think actually now I've... Uh, kind of broken through to the other side. Now the other thing that I did find, and this is uh, something that's really nifty, is uh, basically these shoe rack things that I got on Amazon. We're talking about, well you could make them 20 feet high if you wanted to, but they're only about 30 some odd dollars. And you get a way more shelves out of them because the shelves are only maybe, uh, I don't know, six or seven inches apart. Mm, something like that. Between six and eight inches apart. Whereas most shelving units, they're almost a foot and a half apart. Now the downside is the shelves are just literally tubes like this. That's what makes them really easy to put together and really cheap. So what you do is you just use cardboard, stick that onto those shelves, and now now you actually have genuine regular shelves. So again, you you save the box that it came in, maybe a couple of other boxes. You spend again about thirty-ish bucks or so. You've got yourself a really perfect shelving unit for miniatures, whether or not they're still in the box or not. Uh, so quantum, well, actually, quantum reveries. If you have any painted up or something like that, you want to share them in the chat so people can understand what the heck we're talking about. And actually, well, uh, so acid burn. Now, uh, was it yeah, as far as like your lighting and stuff go? Was it as simple as just transferring everything down there, or did you try to? Uh, create uh, you know ex well like we're just talking about shelving units and such uh, 
uh, and two, trying to find uh, dust-free places for miniatures, but also not having them be out of sight, out of mind. So yes, believe it or not, shoe racks, they'll never have shoes on them. Well, given the fact that I own precisely two pairs of shoes, well, two and a half, the, the one pair is so destroyed it's barely a pair of shoes anymore. I guess it's, I wonder why there is a double one of these here, because I haven't seen anywhere else, but I'm just going to also strengthen up the line in between those. This down here, uh, okay, fine, I'll just use some of my uh, indigo violet down here. There we are. So yeah, the the shoes uh, they've been around. They've been worn for many years, and there's not much left of them. I just replaced them. I think maybe three weeks ago, with essentially a newer version of the same thing. Oh, I'm gonna throw a little bit more of my dark in there, then ah, blending brush. Yep, that's a weird brush to kind of go on awry there, so we just clean that up a little bit. Now, where's the other... Ah, here he is. So, and so the phthalo green that we're using here to get those uh, turquoise, that's the same phthalo green that we used here that we matched up with the fluorescent green. Right, so again, to create that lighting effect there. Same phthalo green that is in this miniature. Both of these are actually Eldfall Chronicles miniatures. Uh, I think the, oh, Merrells. I think that's, yeah, that's what these are, Merrells. And uh, thank goodness, thank goodness I was introduced to those. I'd never heard of them before. Those things lasted, gee whiz, a good six years took all kinds of abuse. Hopefully this new pair lasts as long. Probably will. The scarf over here. Let me do this. And much like the toes, I'm going to try and get some of these individual little do thingies here. Yeah, so this brush now really does uh, kind of act the way I need it to. I just, uh, again, had to break it in. And then I'm going to try and do a little bit of dark on the lips there. And then I'm going to try and bring back the light one more time here. Let's see if this will work, especially now with the uh, brush conditioned a little bit better.